Hello, it's Captain Hooch here, and let me take you on a journey of discovery in our elite galaxy. Today we are going to explore brown dwarf stars. They aren't quite a star and they aren't quite a gas giant. They are kind of in between. Because of this, they were originally suggested to be called planetars or substars until an American astronomer in 1975 by the name of Jill Tarter suggested the name brown dwarf and it stuck. Humans theorized brown dwarfs would exist back in the 1960s, but the first official discovery came in 1994 by Spanish astrophysicist Rafael Rebolo Lopez and his team. They called this object TD-1, and it was found in the Pleiades Open Cluster. So, what makes brown dwarfs so unique? Brown dwarf stars are also known as failed stars, or aborted stars, and the names are surprisingly accurate. So, how do they form? Well, to answer that, first we gotta explain how all stars form. Stars form when clouds of dust and gas in space, such as nebulas, begin to collapse into knots, roughly the mass of a star. These regions will heat up and they ignite into nuclear fusion, and become a star. Or they don't, and they become a brown dwarf. So wait, why don't they ignite? Well, either they don't gain enough mass to ignite, or they get ejected from their stellar nursery due to gravitational forces of other bodies in the region before they can collect enough mass. Sometimes, though, when the latter happens, they drag enough gas with them to finish forming, but not enough to become a proper star, and instead only enough to become a brown dwarf. Now, normally fusion will stabilize a star, but since most brown dwarfs don't do this, and the more massive ones only manage deuterium or hydrogen fusion for about 10 million years, how do they stabilize? Well, that's because of their density. They are incredibly dense. And because electrons want to push away from each other, but the gravity of the star draws them back in, keeping it stable, it goes through a process that we call free electron degeneracy, and this stabilizes the brown dwarf star. So we're left with a failed or aborted star that never quite reached the main sequence stage, or was only in it very briefly. The brown dwarf is much cooler than other stars, and their light output is mostly in the infrared. Visibly, they would be in the blue or red spectrum, giving them their reddish magenta color, and the constant question, why are they called brown dwarfs, if they aren't brown? Honestly? I don't know. The name is just a misnomer, it seems. Regardless, brown dwarfs are interesting, and their story is kinda sad starting off forming like a proper star and, due to various reasons, never quite making it. This has been Our Elite Galaxy, Episode 2, Brown Dwarfs. If you would like to see more of this series, please feel free to like and subscribe.